breaking the bondage of bottom feeding and the art of fighting from the bottom that 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 tells you in there that there's an art to it there's a skill set to it it's it reminds me when he first told me what the title was that that art when you got art because I'm an artist I'm a dancer I'm a choreographer I have a dance school so when I think about art I think of creativity I think of using all your resources I think of pulling things from the air making something out of nothing because that's what artists do it's like like a painter when they paint an abstract picture at first it might look like it's a bunch of mess or you don't understand it but when that artist is, is drawing or when that artist is painting and the broad strokes are going across that paper and it looks a mess if you check in too soon but by the time they get done they know what's in the mindset and what's in their mindset is a masterpiece at the end and so when you're fighting from the bottom the art part of it is that it is in the master's hand your life his will and your will together will be a great masterpiece and God will teach you how to fight in any situation and the definition of bottom feeding is a fish that feeds from the bottom number two is one that is of the lowest status and rank. I don't know anybody that wanna be low. Number three, it's a person that is an opportunist, a person that wants to take advantage of other people, no matter what. And the only way they can take advantage of other people is if they're up close and personal and they take advantage. That is a bottom feeder. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. Now he's talking to a people. He's talking to his people here. You shall be above only. Somebody say only. And thou shalt not be beneath. If, now there's stipulations to this promise. He says, if thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God. So if and only if you hearken to the commandments of the Lord, you will be at the top. You will be above and not beneath. He said only. So there's no other way for the child of God because in this passage of scripture, he's talking to the saints. He's talking to Christians. He's talking to a people, the children of Israel that have turned their back on God several times. And so here God is making a declaration and a promise to them one more time. Again, through his grace, he's saying that you will be at the top. You will be above if you hearken if you listen if you do my commandments he said whatever I command thee this day not only do them but observe them observe means to study it means to look at it means to remind yourself over and over and over again what the Lord is saying to the church to the house of God all right let's go to Galatians chapter 2 and 4 it says if you have it say amen Galatians 2 and 4 it says and that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privately to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they may or they might bring us into bondage I want to read that in the in the amplified all right, if you have it, say amen. I'm at uh, Galatians 2 and 4, and I'm about to read it in the, um, in the amplified version. If you have that, just follow along. If not, then just listen. He said, my precaution was because of false brethren who had been secretly smuggled in to the Christian brotherhood, they had slipped in to spy on our liberty and the freedom which we have in Christ Jesus that they might again bring us into bondage under the law of Moses. So he's saying that that's happening right in the church. He's saying that people 
who are here or in your midst might not be who they say they are. We have undercover Christians, undercover snakes, because actually when you're undercover, you really can't be a Christian. We have undercover snakes in the house of God, pretending and smiling like everything is okay but are watching how God uses you, how God, how, when he said the liberty, he's saying how they were set free, how they didn't need the bondages of Satan anymore under the Mosaic law anymore, and how when Jesus came, they were set free, but they wanna watch you. And they wanna mix in amongst the brethren. They wanna deceive you. When you're at the bottom, you cannot be real. When you're, when you're a bottom feeder, it's impossible to be authentic. When you're at the bottom, it's impossible. When you're a bottom feeder, it's impossible to allow people to see who you really are because you really ain't. It doesn't matter if you start off on the bottom. What matters is where you end up. You might have been born into a bottom, or, the, or, or I should say, you might have been born into a bottom feeding family. Now, some of us don't wanna say that. It's no knock on your parents, but it's just what it is. It might have been poverty. You might have been cussed out. It might have been abuse in your home, dysfunction in your home. You might have just been born, no fault of your own. It just so happened to be your circumstances at that time. But it doesn't matter if you start at the bottom. It matters where you end up. Long as your mind says, I don't have to stay here. You might have money, you might have wealth. It doesn't have anything to do with your money or your wealth. It has everything to do with your mindset and where your mind is. Flatfish, eels, cod, haddock, bass, grouper, carp, snapper, and the catfish we eat every day. My heart was so broken. I was like, no, 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 Lord. Not the, cat, not the catfish family. They're all bottom feeders. They're called the bottom feeding families. I don't know if I'm gonna eat no more catfish. <laughs> we have to sanctify it real good. Pray over it. Lord, in the name of Jesus, all the catfish, all the bottom feeding things inside of it, I bind in the name of Jesus. All bottom feeding fish, they feed on or near the bottom. They eat dead and organic material that drifts through the ocean and ends up at the bottom. They eat material that is the waste. And, and, and they eat it even when it's all inside of the sand on the bottom of the ocean. They absorb carbon dioxide in their system and they allow the gas to be contained on the inside of them and it doesn't harm them because they're used to being in that poisonous, toxic environment. So it absorbs their whole bodies and they get used to it and it doesn't kill them. They are at the bottom and when they're at the bottom, they contain all the other bottom feeding animals and they go after each other. The bottom feeders go after the bottom feeders. Bottom feeders hang around bottom feeders. So when you're not a bottom feeder, you can't be in that environment because it would be poisonous to your very soul. And you have some that are carnivores. These fish are carnivores and they eat anything with meat. Whether it's each other, whether it's their children, they want to eat anything. And what they do is that they 
specialize in hunting. These bottom feeders, they specialize in hunting and they specialize in hunting each other. And so what they do is that they, they cover themselves in sand so they won't be noticed. So they hide underneath the sand. Some of them go deep down. They take their whole bodies. They're able to bury themselves in the sand. So when another bottom feeding fish is going by, they can sit there and calculate how to strike out. And as soon as the opportunity comes, this is what bottom feeders do. They sit back and watch the prey. And when the bottom feeder and fish, the other ones are going by, they make their mark and they make their move and they strike them from behind and they kill them. Y'all better get away from the bottom feeding people around you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness today? There's people that are on the hunt for you, for your identity, for your success. They wait and they strike and they want to bring you down. Hallelujah. They want to deceive you into thinking that they're your friend, but they really ain't your friend. They're just around you because they're really jealous of you. They're really envious of you. They really wanna feed from you. They wanna take over your identity because bottom feeders don't have no identity. They want yours. They spit poison just like the bottom feeding fish. They discredit you when you have a good idea. Hallelujah. Bottom feeders can survive in poisonous situations. So bottom feeding people are used to drama. They love the atmosphere of poison, leaving off their lips, running their mouths, talking about different things, talking about people, saying things, murderous things, talking about the church, whatever they can get their lips on, whatever they can get their lying lips on, that is what a bottom feeder does. If you've enjoyed this word today, then you need to get this message in its entirety. To receive the link to select your desired message or series, please send your info to wordlife at chfgm.org and type word life in the subject bar thank you so much for your continued support real hope real life real message all right let's go to matthew chapter four and let's go let's start reading at verse 18 and it says, And Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, which, in, which interprets a rock or Petrus. Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 26. When you get there, say amen. Okay, let's go to 26 and let's start reading at verse 31. Verse 31, and it says, Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Uh, verse 33, Peter answered and said unto him, Through all men, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never, ever be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Verse 3, verse 35. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Let's drop down in the same chapter to verse um, 69. Verse 69 says, Now Peter sat without, that means on the outside of the palace. He sat on the outside of the palace 
and a damsel came unto him saying, thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all saying, I know not what thou sayest. Verse 71, and then and when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. Verse 73, and after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said, Peter, surely, this is the third witness, surely thou also art one of them. For thy speech bereath thee. 74, then began he to curse and swear he started cussing <laughs> and he started swearing saying I know not the man and immediately the cock crowed and Peter are y'all seeing that and he it says immediately the cock crow Verse 75, and Peter remembered the words of Jesus, which said unto him before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. So we see here that Peter denied Jesus three times. Now Jesus is about to go to the cross and they captured Jesus. They had knives and they, they were ready to kill Jesus, but they took him to the palace and they wanted him to go to the cross and die. And in the midst of it, Peter got afraid, like they're going to kill me too. So he ran. And so when he ran, he sat back and he watched everything and he showed up to the place where Jesus was. Now before this, uh, he ran when Jesus got arrested because he was about to get arrested right there but before he got arrested and before he showed up to the palace Peter had a call in his life Peter was a missionary with his wife he, he traveled all over preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ Peter was an important influential person at that time and he preached the unadulterated word of truth he was not a baby Christian but he had some growing up to do Peter's name is mentioned more than any other disciple in the New Testament except for or any other the disciples yes but it's almost mentioned as much as Jesus's name that tells you how much power and influence that this man of God had hallelujah thank you Jesus he walked on water thank you Jesus he in the storm and when it was raging Jesus told him to come out come out here and walk on the water and he had the faith enough at first to believe God or to believe his master so he began to walk on water hallelujah he declared when Jesus said who do men say that I am he was the only one who said thou art the Christ the son of the living God he was the only one who could say that Jesus said flesh and blood have not revealed that to you Peter who revealed that it was the Holy Ghost that revealed who I really am so this same Peter seen Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration he seen Jesus transform hallelujah he seen Elisha and Moses there with Jesus hallelujah Hallelujah! Peter cut off the ear of Malchus uh, because he knew Malchus was about to uh, try to do some harm to his Lord and Savior. So Peter cut the ear off. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. This same Peter was unlearned, untrained. He was not trained properly or, or or I should say in a normal sense of how the other ones were trained in the Mosaic law he was not trained in that he was considered uneducated he was considered not articulate but he still did exploits in God hallelujah sinners recognized who he was the tax collectors came to Peter and said what shall we do they asked him questions he set up legislation to get Herod out of there that's how Herod end up getting beheaded. Hallelujah. Herod was a person that hated Christ Jesus. He hated Christianity. He hated everything that had to do with righteousness. Hallelujah. Can I 
I get a witness today? Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was Jesus. It was Peter's house that Jesus went to in Capernaum, who wasn't even in the same city as Jesus. He lived in North Capernaum, but Jesus felt like I had to go see him because his mother-in-law, his wife's mother was sick. Jesus went to the house and healed the mother-in-law. That's how important Peter was. Peter was the one, hallelujah, that Jesus said, feed my sheep. Hallelujah. Peter introduced the Gentiles to the church, to the early church. When they first started witnessing, it was Peter there spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Three years after Paul got saved and converted, Paul went to Peter. He went to him because I need counsel. I need to go see a disciple named Peter. He stayed with Peter for two weeks. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He was the first one to preach at Pentecost. He was the first one to see people filled with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. When he was in prison, the angels visited him. He was handcuffed and uh, he got a miracle the angels uh, came and rescued him and the handcuff and the chains and shackles fell off hallelujah thank you jesus somebody as righteous as that uh, had a bottom feeding moment uh, he had a bottom feeding experience uh, because he denied jesus three times uh, he caught a cussing and swearing uh, i don't know the man uh, hallelujah but one thing about Peter, he understood the art of, of fighting from the bottom. Hallelujah. He understood it takes repentance. He understood it takes humility. If you ever have a bottom feeding experience, just repent. Hallelujah. Just turn. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Worthy. Some of you might be at rock bottom, but I got good news for you. You might not be at the top, but if Peter can pass through, if Peter can get through, if Peter knew God how he knew him, denied him and cussed, God is here for you. He will give you the tools. He'll give you faith as one of your tools. Hallelujah. In order to fight, from the bottom in order to have the art of it you gotta be skilled god has given you the skills and the technique it's called faith the technique of prayer the technique of standing on god's word the technique of not taking down the technique of sowing and sowing hallelujah thank you jesus give god some praise He's worthy. Peter fought the good fight of faith after his fall. After his fall, he made a lot of that happen. After his fall, he became prominent. After his fall, he still evangelized. He was one of the greatest missionaries ever known to man. Hallelujah. Your bottle feeding experience doesn't define you. It does not define you. Wherever you come from, wherever you're at today, from the top. It's time to rise up. It's time to level up. It's time to go up from faith to faith to faith to faith. It's no time to look back. It's no time to go back. It's no time to stay on the bottom. Get up. Get up. Get up. People of God, get up. It's time to fight. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Pull down some strongholds today. Pull down some strongholds in your faith. Pull down some strongholds in your bottom feeding ways. Get rid of it. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Welcome, Kingdom Citizens. So glad you had another chance to check out our broadcast. Oh, man, every time uh, my wife preaches, it blesses me so, so much. I'm so encouraged. 
hopefully you're motivated to stop feeding and living from the bottom and have aspirations for God to take you to the top. Listen, we're living in so many troubling times and right here in our city, we just had another young man get shot uh, at the hands of the police. And so the city is in a uproar and there's a lot of unrest here. So Twin Cities area, we wanna be a, a blessing uh, to the city. And if there's anyone out there watching our program and you're in this Twin City area, trust me, we're in prayer for our city. But also, if you want to be uplifted and you want to be encouraged, come out to one of our services here, right here on 2010 Fremont. Listen, we want to be here for you. We want to be a strength in, in this time of great stress and great devastation. And uh, we are recognized it all over the even down here, because Minneapolis and, and, and Brooklyn Center are like five minutes apart. And what they really don't talk about in the media is that it's a border, it's a, like a border city immediately adjacent to us. And so I could drive to Brooklyn Center and be there in five minutes. And that's how close these cities are. And so what they feel, we feel, and what we have going on here on Broadway, people are boarding up and we've got the trial going on here in the city. Hey, Twin Cities, we're here for you. So if you need prayer, you need to be uplifted, please come to Real Believers Faith Center. We want to be a light to you. Amen. And if all of our friends and partners out there, you don't live in our city, pray for us uh, because we need your prayers as we're praying for what's going on in the rest of the world. So thank you again for watching our broadcast. Please, if you've been inspired by our broadcast, partner with us. Also, if this broadcast has been a blessing to you and this sermon has been a blessing to you and you've been taking in these broadcasts over these weeks and months, please sow into us by downloading GiveLify. Amen. Your gift, your charitable gift will be greatly appreciated in continuing to push this ministry and doing great things in this city. So God bless you. God keep you. And remember, always remember, take your dominion. God bless you, Kingdom Citizens.